Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities, work our way through the dollar yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that I follow. Uh, I'm gonna interject my financial opinions as we go. Uh, and again, if you have, if you need any help with anything, check out finding-value.com. Uh, we do have a question and answer session coming up on Saturday, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And uh, I will be releasing a discount uh, for memberships coming up here uh, for Halloween. Uh, so do look for something coming up uh, for Halloween. It's only going to be active for two days. <laughs> uh, so watch for it. Look in the description link uh, if you're interested for the discount coupon code. All right, guys. Um, so let's dive in here. Let's see what's going on with markets. Uh, so looking at this, we've got a little bit of a slowdown in the dollar. We kind of broke through. Uh, we've got a nice little wick at the top here that generally indicates that we could pull back in the short term. This is what it looks like on the five minute chart. <laughs> so uh, what I think may occur is that we could head lower. Lower, I know, I know, lower. Um, it's because of yields. So when we look at yields, I think yields could potentially drop here in the short term uh, and we could see a pullback uh, in yields and bond prices potentially could go up. So here, there's the dollar. The two-year yield getting a little bit more selling pressure today. It is a bearish engulfing and we could potentially pop out of this channel at some point. And I'm using the 10 year and 30 year. I already looked at those to kind of guess where the two year might potentially go. We are getting some stronger selling pressure um, all through here. Uh, it is more persistent. Uh, and that generally indicates that we could get a potential return uh, in the direction that it came from. So we could head lower here in the short to medium term on the two year. I understand higher for longer, but the overall stock market is selling off and I think people are gonna start to turn and buy some of these yields. That's my guess. The 10 year yield, another bearish engulfing today. So now we've got two of them kind of back to back. Uh, this is how a topping process kind of starts. You start throwing these bearish engulfings, you start getting lower highs, um, and then you, eventually you break to the downside. So that's the 10 year yield there, throwing two bearish engulfing signals kind of at the top here. Again, we've got some strong selling pressure uh, or for yields, strong lowering pressure for yields, bearish engulfing here uh, and a bearish piercing here that generally will work its way lower over time. Sideways to lower uh, is what could potentially occur for the 10 year and 30 year bond yields. TYX, TNX ratio up a little bit, that is gonna be supportive of um, gold prices, precious metals prices, generally speaking. We're also at a very low level here. So it's been, Oftentimes, it's been very good to be looking at gold in a inverted yield curve fashion over here. And when this comes and uninverts, uh, that's generally when the physical metal outperforms. And the royalty companies do well during that time frame. Sometimes the mining companies don't do as well until there is uh, stimulus or QE or whatever it is in the system. Bond prices do look like they're trying to throw in a bottom here. Uh, so yields are gonna match whatever bond prices do in the opposite direction. So yields are gonna wanna go down, bond prices are gonna go wanna go up. This is your bullish engulfing. We got another kind of bullish candlestick lining up. Is this gonna you know, work its way up here at some point? So think of it as sideways to higher, whatever that looks like. So, uh, Bond prices could be moving up. What does that mean? Lower yields. Um, we are right at support for bond prices. So we could see a bounce here to the upside with gold going up with it too, I think. Looking at gold, gold trading sideways today. And we've got all these sideways days here, a cluster of them. 
think of that as kind of a sideways pattern, like a like a consolidation. The pattern I don't get too hung up on. Uh, it's just the movement that is being created. And I'm surprised gold didn't go up today. Um, dollar was sideways-ish. We had lower yields and the yield curve uh, uninverting a little bit is generally favorable for gold. So I'm surprised that it just went sideways. But um, again, it, it doesn't look bad. It still looks good to continue higher uh, with time. Silver down a teeny bit, but it's still holding in there right at that resistance line. Still looks all right. We're just waiting for gold to uh, to hit it here. And if we can break through this, it's going to be a big move, big move for silver. Uh, platinum also holding steady. Uh, just down a little bit, that bloody nose still looks good to continue higher if it wants to try to break out of this um, squeezing pattern. And then palladium up a little bit uh, as well, up 0.83%. Doesn't look too bad. But we're still in a big downtrend line. Uh, but it does look like uh, we got a bullish en engulfing there. It does look like it's trying to move higher, maybe put in some sort of uh, base here or something. XAU to go ratio down 1.1%. Uh, we're right back to that level we were at before that we based and kind of went off of. So gold and silver mining company still underperforming gold. And that's what it looks like at the current moment. CRB index down a little bit right on support. Uh, oil was down today and we're right above support. So this CRB index very much is a resemblance of oil to some degree. CRB versus the S&P 500 continuing higher. So uh, commodities, even though they were down a little bit, still outperformed uh, the S&P 500. So that's looking good. Uh, so GDX down a little bit. So gold was basically flat and the gold and silver mining companies were down some. So uh, that's what we're at with the gold and silver mining companies. We still haven't broken out through any of these resistance lines. We're still down uh, underneath stuff. But I think uh, things could turn around quite quickly if gold can get moving here. Crude oil down 2.2%, but we're still above um, good support. This is just, again, sideways to slightly higher is where I think we're going to go uh, if we can hold on the support and bounce off of it. Now, TTF gas up quite big, 6.2%, popping on top of that channel. We'll see if it holds above this consolidation or if it consolidates a little bit further. Uh, but again, we are above support. It's breaking to the upside. Uh, this looks pretty good for a potential move higher for TTF gas. Uh, also, Henry Hub joining in the mix, up very large today, 7.5%. Uh, uh, we were at support, so I think we've broken out. We've done our retest, and hopefully we can get moving to the upside for Nat Gas. Uh, so Nat Gas looks good. We're in a pretty good location for cold weather to probably hit us in America and the world. Uh, it'll soon be coming, and prices are starting to move up a little bit. Uh, XOP. Yeah, you know me. I know people like me saying that. Um, we're still at the neckline. Uh, it didn't help that oil was down today uh, over 2%. Uh, XOP was only down 0.5%, roughly speaking. Uh, it's still holding in there. We're right underneath that neckline. Uh, let's hope we can get a potential break at some point in the future. It looks like we need a little bit more time to base, you know, move sideways before breaking. Uh, OIH down a little bit as well. We're kind of just leaking with the price of oil going down. We're just kind of bleeding off some, some uh, price here. But again, we're still in the uptrend channel. Still looks all right. Crop Physical Uranium Trust down a teeny bit. Still looks good. Momentum still to the upside. Uh, we've broken out of this pattern there to the upside. Everything looks good. Uh, URA, another just normal down day. It's not. A reversal candlestick or anything like that. So everything is still game for a potential move to the upside. Uh, Urine M's the same way and Urine J is the same way. Yep, got a little bit of selling pressure. Could it go a little bit lower? Yes, it could. Um, the overall markets are selling off. Keep that in mind. There's going to be times where uh, everything could sell off depending on the size of the move to the downside. 
can up 1%. Uh, that's what we're looking at there. And we are breaking below support. Uh, a lot of the companies in solar and renewables uh, are not doing very well. They are losing money. COPX up a half a percent. Uh, it's trying to hang in there. Again, we've got strong support down at about $30. And we do have some downside momentum pushing that a little bit lower. Lithium down 1%, a little bit of momentum being gathered to the downside, and we could head towards $36 a share-ish. That's our support level. REMX also heading a little bit lower in the short term, and it looks like there's momentum behind that. So my guess is lower until we start to see uh, buying pressure. Uh, the S&P 500 definitely selling off looks pretty weak this could continue even if rates go down um, same with the nasdaq down 1.7 percent still looks pretty weak to head lower and the momentum is to the downside and this is what it looks like from bigger picture uh, this could be a peak and this could be a lower peak uh, this could be your batman pattern What's up, batman <laughs> Uh, KRE, the uh, regional banking ETF, bouncing today up th about 3%, still in a downtrend, and we have not broken that downtrend yet. Uh, I think there were stronger sales, I believe, in the housing market. Uh, maybe this is bouncing because of that. Emerging markets still down a little bit, even though yields were off dollars slightly stronger. Uh, but if a slowdown does come to America, it could impact emerging markets as well. Uh, but I do think that if yields do decline substantially, uh, we'll probably see the dollar decline too, is my guess, which is going to support emerging markets. XHB, which is the home builder, still looking pretty rough over there. It was up 0.88% today, but no reversal candlestick. And this momentum is carrying us to the downside. Is that the dreaded Batman pattern? It could be. Um, we could go ahead a little bit lower in the home builders in the short term. Moo trying to gather itself, but the momentum still to the downside. Uh, small, slight update today. But again, I we go sideways to lower is my guess. Looking at the chart, no reversal candlestick yet, and support is still at $69-ish. Copper moving sideways, uh, it's holding on here. But if we lose the overall market, we'll see where copper goes. Uh, we did enter this downward move with pretty strong selling pressure. It's a knock to the head. We kind of consolidated, you know, sideways here. You know, if we could point this thing upward. You know, tough to say where this is going to go. Is it squeezing to some degree? where this is a pattern where it could be a continuation pattern to the downside. It could be. But again, let's wait and get more data here on copper. Iron ore futures selling off a teeny, teeny bit, ever so slightly. It's basically sideways, but we're sitting on top of a big pattern. Uh, this generally looks pretty bullish, uh, just looking at the pattern itself. It is a bullish engulfing here if we end the week strong. Nickel down 0.5%. Again, there's no reversal here. This still looks like it could go lower. Uh, aluminum also looking a little bit on the weaker side here, getting a bearish engulfing today, uh, right on support. So we'll see how much oomph this has behind it and if we sell off further. Baltic Dry Index doing a retest. So we're basically on that very strong resistance support level that has gone back way back into the, I think it was the 80s. Let me see here. All the way back to 1988. 88, and we're, we're just loving that Baltic Dry Index number down there. Newcastle Coal up a little bit, 1.25% uh, on the day. I'm showing the weekly here. Uh, again, with natural gas moving higher, I think this is going to look good uh, after this base is out and starts to move on up. Bitcoin down a little bit. Uh, someone had put, I saw a uh, 
a post on Bitcoin here. They had thrown a trend line through this. Then that that could potentially be support resistance uh, drawn through that way. Um, that's how they had it drawn. But again, we'll see what happens. And uh, I think if the government responds with money printing, which I think gold and Bitcoin, I think they're positioning where something could happen in the markets. I don't know exactly what, uh, but they've been awfully strong, both of those. Probably sniffing out some sort of quantitative easing, yield curve control. I don't know what else they can do. Something. Maybe it's war spending, deficit spending of something to do with the war. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. And the overall markets do look pretty weak. I mean, the S&P and the NASDAQ do look pretty weak. Uh, the yield curve is inverted and it is uninverting. Uh, to some degree, it's been mainly the long end coming up. And, you know, we could go into a slowdown here. It is very much possible. Uh, will some of these sectors buck the slowdown? I don't know. Difficult to say. Uh, and is it going to be contained to certain portions of the economy, like the financial side versus the real side, the real economy versus the financial uh, economy? Uh, again, I don't know with 100% certainty that. Um, but again, with, with yields going down, dollar could follow with it. Uh, the stock market, it's already got momentum to the downside. And maybe we do get a, a pullback slowdown in the markets. So... That's what I've seen in the charts right now. Uh, there are some sectors that are weakening, definitely. And the ones that have been strong, energy in particular, are remaining strong. You know, nat gas still looks strong. Coal will probably be strong with nat gas. Uh, uranium is still strong and oil still looks good. So split, split market here. Oil strong, or energy strong, I should say. And then the other portions of the market do look a little bit weak. All right, guys, that's what I've got for today. Thumb up, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe to the website if you guys like to. Uh, we'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.